Welcome back to Heirloom Ornaments. Uh, I'm Stacy, and I'm going to show you today how to crochet wine glass covers. Um, I'm going to show you how to make this one, but at the end of the video, I'm going to show you how to change it up uh, depending on how many ribs you want in your pumpkin and also different ways to finish it off. You can either use crochet some twine or use some actual twine. Different colors give you different effects. You don't need much for this video. A little bit of orange or whatever color you want your pumpkin to be and then whatever color you want your stem to be. This is regular worset weight yarn. I'm using this is called pumpkin and this is called lime. I will put them in the link in the description when I'm done. You'll need a G hook and some scissors and a darning needle for at the very end. Um, Let's get started. Start it. I don't have a written pattern. I will try to type it out and be very specific when I'm talking. I could find one pattern I like the best, so I kind of hodgepodged a couple of them together. To start, I'm going to have a very long tail so that at the end I can weave it to make the curve of the pumpkin. But you're going to start by making your, whoops, your slip knot onto your hook, again with your long tail. And we're just going to simply chain up 36. So just basic chain, yarn over, pull through. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, nineteen, twenty, twenty. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we have 36 chain. We want to leave it straight as you can and go all the way around to that first chain and slip stitch into there. So you're just going to put your hook into there. I like to use the little ribs on the back. However you put it through is up to you. Um, I've always used it that way. I like the way it looks when it's all finished. And then you're just going to yarn over, pull through, oops, and pull right through your chain on the hook. That's a slip stitch. It's that simple. We now just made a ring. The, for the first round, we're going to chain up three, yarn over, pull through one, two, three, and that's going to count as our first double crochet. Now we're going to just double crochet in every single stitch around. So with this being included as our first, we'll end up with 36, 36 double crochets. So I want to yarn over, go into the rib, yarn over, pull through. You now have three on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. That's your double crochet. Yarn over. Go into the next one. This first row is always the hardest. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. I'll show you again. Just doing basic double crochets. Yarn over, go into the rib or the stitch. Yarn over, pull through. You have three on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Again, you're just gonna do that all the way around and then I'll meet back up with you uh, at the end. You can either pause this or stop it or... Okay, now you should have 36 double crochets in your round. And when you get done the last one, to end, you're gonna go in the top of that first one, yarn over, pull through, and just slip stitch it to there. And now you have a ring of your 36 stitches. You wanna chain up. And we're gonna do this a little different. To get the ribs, we wanna do front post, back post, and that kind of gives you that uh, 3D effect. To do that, you wanna yarn over, and instead of going in the stitch, we're gonna go around the post. So you wanna take your hook and go behind in the post. So it's behind the post. Yarn over, pull through. You now have three on the hook, just like you would with a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two. Oops. Oh, yarn is splitting a little bit. And then yarn over, pull through two. 
The next two stitches, we're gonna do back post, which is yarn over, go around the back of the post. So if you look from the back, it's behind the post. Yarn over, pull through. And again, you'll have three on the hook, just like a double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. I'm gonna do that again for the next one. I'm gonna do this whole round with you. Yarn over, go to the back post. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Now we're gonna go back to the front post. Yarn over, front post. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. That's gonna be our pattern. One front, two back. So now we did the one front, we're gonna do two back. Yarn over, this is your next stitch. You're gonna go around the post. Yarn over, draw up three on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We're gonna do the very next one is gonna be another back one. Yarn over, around the back post. Yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. So we did the two back, now we're gonna do the one in the front. Yarn over, front post, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Now we're gonna do another back one. Yarn over, yarn over. The next back one, yarn over, Yarn over, yarn over. Same pattern all the way around. So now back to the front. Yarn over, around the front post. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Let me let myself some yarn out. Now we did the one front, we're gonna do the two back. Yarn over, around the back post. Pull through, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through. And another back one, yarn over, I mean around the post, yarn over, pull through, over the two, over the one. Now we're back to the front, yarn over, front. Now we'll do the back, around the back. And these are double crochets, front post, back post, that's what they're called. And another one through the back. And now we're back to the front. Yarn over, pull through. Yarn over, pull through. Around the back. Yarn over, yarn over, and another back. One front, two back. Just did two back, then we're going back to the front. And two back. One and two. Whoops, I dropped that. And here's two. The first couple might be difficult, but then you see they're just like doing a, crochet, a double crochet, just not instead of the stitch, we're going around the post. Now we're back to the front for one, to the back for two. Back for two. Around the front for one. And then the back for two. One. Two. Around the front for one. And this will look a little near when you get to the other rows. It, it's kind of the next row makes the first, the previous row stand up a nice and a lot better. Whoops, I messed that one up. So I did the front one and we're gonna do back two. One, two, and another one in the back. One. And now we're gonna go back to the front. For one. And then the back for two, one. Two, I think we have one more set to do. Yep. 
we're gonna go around the front for one and then the back for one two one and two and that's our last stitch and to finish this row we're going to go to the top that of that chain right here see that right here this is the top of the chain right here right there and we're just going to slip stitch through and that's our first two rounds now we're going to do round three which is chain up and yarn over and we're going to go right back around that first post right around the post this one's a little thicker but that's all right around our yarn over pull through two whoops and pull through two and then the same two that you did the back we're going to the back we're going to do the same way all the way up this is going to give us those lines one yarn over two yarn over around the back it looks a little cumbersome but if you could see it this with the two that we did before there's the one and now here's the second one yarn over pull through yarn over pull through yarn over pull through and then this is our front post from the previous row yarn over go around that front post yarn over pull through yarn over pull through two whoops and yarn over pull through two and yarn over go around that back one right and see it coming through there and around we're going to round that back post pull it on up yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through two and the same thing for the next one and this is the pattern over and over again until you get around and we slip stitch again this round is exactly the same as the previous round we're going one in the front and two in the back until you get around and we're going to do that for a total of seven rows so now we did two together we did half of the third one together i'm going to leave you here i'm going to meet you back up at the end for the final round okay now that you've done your pattern all the way around uh it was seven rows of the front post back post one of the other so a total of eight but once you get to the end you're going to go to the top and just slip stitch like we did all the other rows at the end and we're going to go around in a single crochet but before i do that i want to take my glass and i want to make sure i have enough rows uh, again we have the one row of the just the double and then seven rows of the front post back post um, and this is the last the uh, sorry the long string i had in the beginning we're going to sew this to tighten this up a little bit but i'm not going to do that that's going to do the very end this is about where it is now. And I like that. I, I don't want it all the way over the top. You just want it to come to the edge. And if I want to come it just a little bit lower, then that's where I'm going to cinch this bottom. And that's just right where I want it. Uh, this is a red wine glass. It's This is actually from the dollar store. I like these cups. They're nice and thick. If you were doing a white wine glass, which is just the taller, thinner one, um, you might want to do another row or two. So you want to judge it before you finish off. So the, I like where that's at. So I'm going to finish and leave that there. And then we just, oops, we just slip stitch. Now I'm just going to chain up one and then go in here in single crochet. Just go in uh, one, draw up and pull it through the two. And I'm going to do a single crochet in every one of the 36 around. So in your stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then pull through. That's all it is. It's just a single crochet all the way around. And you don't need me to show you this, so I'll meet you back up at the end. Now that you've gone all the way around to your last one, you're just going to slip stitch into the first stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. That's it. And then we're going to do one and fasten off. And then you will just weave that in. And next we'll do the rind. Now to make the rind, I tried a couple different things. First I did a, just a long 
chain and tried to weave it in and out, but I didn't like the way it, it looked like a sack to me. It didn't look, it looked like a pouch or a, a drawstring and it didn't look like the top. You would never see um, a vine going in and out of a pumpkin. It would just lay across the top. So instead what I decided to do was an embroidery stitch. If you've ever embroidered with crochet, it's really just a slip stitch all the way around. So I'm gonna stick my yarn in any spot and I'm gonna grab my yarn. Whoops, get this out of your way. Yarn over, pull it through, and then pull it through the stitch this, the, on my hook. I'm not even gonna crochet any type of uh, single or anything. I'm just going to slip stitch all the way around. So the next one, I'm gonna go in the, the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. That's all I'm doing all the way around. Yarn, go in the stitch, yarn over, pull through, and slip stitch through. One thing you gotta be mindful of is don't pull tight on this. If you pull this tight, it's very easy to do because it's a slip stitch and you're just going quick and your tension's thick, I'm sorry, tight. You're just gonna keep going through. But every once in a while, make sure it's loose. Otherwise, it'll be so tight, it won't fit around the top of your glass. So make a nice loose stitch all the way around, 36 of them, and then I'll meet you back up at the end. And now that I've slip stitched all the way around, I'm gonna go back to that first one because I want it to be a complete circle. Here's where you can fasten off and you can use some twine, tie it up in a bow, do another color, uh, another color leaf if you want. This is teal and white or cream. Um, I'm going to show you though how to crochet the vine only because the twine one's self-explanatory and this one's not. <laughs> so I'm gonna show you how to do the vine. This is a simple twist. You, I've made scarves this way. It's very common pattern. I'm just gonna go up, uh, I'm not gonna fasten off, I'm gonna go straight from here. I'm gonna go straight up 15, chain to 15. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, whoa. 15. And now going back down that chain in the, in the second one, I'm going to put a single crochet. And then the next one, I'm going to put two single crochet. So one and then two. And the next one, I'm going to do one. I think you know where I'm going. And then the next one I'm gonna do two. By doing this one single crochet and then two single crochet, it's gonna make it naturally curve up. We did two, now we're gonna do one. And then two. One, two. We're gonna do this all the way down. One. And then one, two, one. You see it's already starting to curl on me. Two. And I like doing this right away because I don't like to have to fasten off and you know slip back on and then you end up with all these we uh, uh ends to weave in. I hate weaving in ends. I'm one of those type who who weaves as I go because I hate to have that at the end of a project, especially when you're making like a great big blanket. And there's, oh, I'm having a little trouble here. One, and then we're gonna do two. If you lose count, forget what you did one and which one you did two. Honestly, it doesn't make that huge of a difference. This is just a piece of vine. And then one, and then one, two. Now, Again, you can fasten off and you just have some, you have your vine. You can glue on uh, real leaves from like, or fake, fake real leaves from the dollar store. If you have like uh, leftover foliage, you can always put on a sunflower or whatever you want. You can decorate these any way you want. But what I'm gonna do is show you how to make the leaf and I'm not fastening off. I'm gonna go right in here. I'm just gonna do a slip stitch to start at the bottom that I'm hooked here. And now I don't have to weave in any more ends. I'm gonna just go right into my leaf. 
To make my leaf, I'm going to chain up five. One, two, three, four, five. And then I'm going to slip stitch back into the base of that chain five. Just a basic slip stitch. And what I've now done is I formed this little circle. I just formed a ring. To start my leaf, I'm going to go uh, in with a half double crochet into the ring. I'm going right into the ring. And a half double crochet is just yarn over and then pulling through all three. In the same ring, I'm now going to do two double crochet. One, which is a yarn over, pull through two, one, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, oops, split again. This yarn's been splitting me all night, and pull through two. Now I'm going to do a treble, which is yarn over, yarn over, into the circle, yarn over, pull through. You now have four on the hook. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over, pull through two. And that's your treble. Now I'm gonna chain three and I'm gonna slip stitch, slip stitch back into the base. It's gonna give me a little point at the top of my, my uh, leaf. That's the same as if you do edge on a blanket, like a peacoat. So then I'm gonna go the same thing, but down the other way. So now I'm gonna go the treble, yarn over, yarn over, into the circle, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And then going back, we have, oh, I'm sorry, I keep knocking that camera. Uh, two doubles, one, two, and then a half double. Just yarn over and then pull through all three. And then to finish off, we're going to slip stitch back into the base. And that is it, you are done. You're gonna fasten that off, weave in your ends and get it all nice and then that's it. I'm gonna show you what to do with this part now. Now for the bottom part, I'm gonna turn my glass upside down. I'm gonna put my pumpkin back on and I'm gonna set it where I want it. Remember I said I didn't want it too high put it there and now I'm going to cinch this around. So I'm going to take the long piece that I had and I'm going to use my darning needle and I'm just going to go weave in it and I like to do this while it's on the glass. I think it's easier for me and don't skip stitches because then you'll see a big gap in your weave if you've ever done sewing. It's kind of just a regular sewing stitch. We're just going to go all the way around, in, out, in, out. And kind of pulling it tight each time a little bit, kind of cinching it up. Again, I want it to look like a round pumpkin. I don't want it to look like a straight like sleeve on there. I want to make it more than just that. In, out, in, out. And give it a little tug. In, out. And out. All right. All the way around. And these would be really cute. Could you imagine making a bunch of these for Thanksgiving dinner? Have them sit at the table or your friends giving with your oh friends giving my friends giving bunko. Guess what I'm putting out for all the girls. <laughs> these will look so cute all together. Make sure it's see, I'm gonna pull a little tight there, like it a little snug. Not so snug you can't get it off the wine glass because you're gonna have to be able to wash these or remove them when you're drinking. You might want to leave them on, some people might want to take them off. And then that's it. We're just gonna knot this off and tie it into a knot. Let me just get this. I forgot to actually go around a stitch. Let's go around. Let's go around one more here. I don't like that gap there. See, fix it up yourself. And then we're just gonna tie it off. And we'll weave that in at the end. One more. 
And there you have it. He's all done. Now, like I said, I was going to show you the difference between the different stitches. So to get the different effects of the ribbons, how big you, I guess they're called ribs. I've been calling them ribs all this time. That's what I'm calling them. Um, we did the front post for one, the back post for two. And these were increments of three all the way around for our 36. If you want larger gaps in your ribs, this one I did one front, five behind, and it gave me more of a pumpkin-y look, I think. If you're doing a short fat, I like the short fatter ones, but if you're doing it uh, in a short fat and you like the way the a big pumpkin would look, this is a good idea too if you want to put maybe embroidered uh, eyes and nose for a jack-o'-lantern, you can always do that or iron on it. My third option is one front, one back. One front, one back. And it gives you uh, a lot of different little ribs. So it depends on how you want to do it is the pattern you're going to choose. So it's all exactly the same. It's just a matter of how many front, how many back. And then again, you can use the twine or you can use different colors, burgundies and dark greens. Have fun with them.